It's your shout. Good morning to you. Trust you had a fine night? Yes, I did. Glory be to Jesus Christ. We are sharing truth this morning on God will bring you forward. Coming from 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 8 through 13. You are warmly, warmly welcome to the Really, Really Knowing God channel. I am Pastor Larry Adeneko. Channel is packaged to inform and inspire you into the real knowledge of the very real God that we serve. Powered by the Pastor Larry Adeneko Center for Age Inspiration, the PLACE. This is a daily gem devotional, making you a gem to your generation and a gemstone upon the crown of Jesus Christ. If you desire to really understand this fantastic God of ours, this is your favorite channel. We are praying now. Father in heaven, we give you thanks for the spirit of wisdom and of revelation. Thank you by that spirit, by that gift to God. You have helped us so much here. To call the praise in Jesus' holy name. We receive again this morning in fuller measure than at yesterday that your people may be maximally uh, benefited. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Okay, then, 1 Samuel 16, 8. So Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Thus Jesse made his sons to pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen this. And Samuel said to Jesse, are all the young men here? Then he said, There remains yet the youngest, and there he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. So he sent and brought him in, and he was ruddy and bright with bright eyes and good looking. And the Lord said, Arise and anoint him, for this is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of God came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. Praise the Lord. Okay, then. So um we, we began with uh, samuel had reached there now the elders had come to say are we safe <laughs> he had you know convinced them that they were safe they had he even invited them to the sacrifice they had their portion they had gone now specifically with the family of jesse so he went on and remember we said he brought eliab and god said well, you look people look on the outside i look on at the heart okay so um he now passed all the other sons one after the other and he god didn't choose any of them so that's the that's the thing so samuel said are all the young men here and we want to learn something from there when you are puzzled ask questions when you are puzzled seek information now this um failure to ask questions this um Shall I say shyness to ask questions, to let people know that, look, I need information. I need enlightenment. I need education in this regard. Some people just feel so shy to say, please, I don't know this thing. I'm not used to this thing. I need education in this area, enlightenment. And some people just don't want to do that. It doesn't make you feel small at all. Ask questions when you are puzzled. Please, please do not feel inferior because you don't know something or the other ask questions okay uh, but that's what we found with samuel said ah, are all the young men here Samuel could have considered if i ask that question the man will say to me you are a man of god you are a prophet they call you a seer if you are a seer shouldn't you see that <laughs> there should be one remaining Samuel did not you know think that way he asked because you see you need you need to humble yourself when you find yourself in a place where you are lacking information ask questions praise the lord so samuel asked the question and he said oh there remains one that's keeping the sheep and he says oh god has seen me i'm not going to sit down until he comes in here now this bit about not sitting down until he comes in i need to explain that whole thing because some some people who keep feeling oh peradventure god you know uh, permitted somewhere to tell a lie that kind of a thing that's not the case here when he says that we're not going to sit down until he comes he describes you gives you an idea that they were actually going through that ritual of when they uh, sacrifice unto the lord after the spiritual aspect of it when they have done all the spiritual after they did all those things standing after all that they will now sit down to eat so when he said we're not going to sit down until he comes it means that we're not going to complete the spiritual aspect of this sacrifice until this person has arrived that's the meaning of we're not going to sit down sit down means to eat that's what it, it you know it means to, to them at that time so let's just get that understood. we're not going to sit down until he arrives so they sent 
and brought him in. I can imagine for how long they remained standing. Because this guy was not in town, <laughs> so much in town. He was, well, maybe town, but then in the fields. He wasn't uh, at the next door playing, you know, the video games with his friends or, you know, whatever. That's not where he was. He was in the fields where the animals were kept, you know, uh, so that they could, um, you know, find some good pasture. So they had to send for him. They would they remain standing until he arrived. <laughs> this is very, very interesting. Let me say to uh, somebody this morning. <clears throat> God will bring you out of obscurity in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There are times when, oh, you are just doing your own, you are just serving your God, you just love your God, but it seems as if you are not popular. It seems as if nobody knows the stuff of which you are made of, but you know you have, you are a goldfish. Look, God will bring you forward. God will bring you out of obscurity and he will bring you to a place where a lot more people can benefit from God's investment in you and God's endowment in you and all that God has uh, uh, so put in you that has made you the goldfish that seems to be hidden. God will make that thing to change and bring you forward in the name of Jesus Christ. We are not going to sit down until this guy is brought forward. Oh, they didn't even reckon with him when, when they were reckoning with people that Samuel could have something to do with. He was not reckoned with, he was not counted at all, you know, until Samuel says, isn't there any other person? Oh, there is one more, you know, as in he's keeping the sheep, he's the youngest of them, he's such as a teenager, you know, this and that he wasn't reckoned with. God will bring you forward. The people, the same people who did not reckon with, who did not reckon with you, will now consider you so important, so special in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Remember, I was just saying something about they were, they were standing. <clears throat> they remain standing until he came. <laughs> in your day, upon your day, <clears throat> you will get a guard of honor in the name of Jesus Christ. God will make the people give you a guard of honor when it is your day. Look, remember, Jesus looked at Jerusalem and said, if only, at least in this your day. Yeah, there are times when there's a day ordained from heaven for you. And that's your day, people will mount a guard of honor for you. And the day of your honor, the Lord will make sure that you are honored properly in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. They remain standing until this young goldfish that seemed to be hidden. God brought him out of obscurity. God brought him forward. Okay? And he will bring somebody listening to me this morning, will bring you forward in the name of Jesus Christ. He will bring you out of obscurity. And you more people will be blessed on account of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. And the Lord said, and when he brought him forward, he was ready, you know, um, kind of, uh, should I say a bit reddish or, or, or what's the other word for it now? You know, yeah, some form of reddish or some form of uh, good looking round face, <laughs> you know, bright eyes, good looking. The Lord said, I rather than anoint him. So this is the one. It was fresh. It was um fresh and uh, and young and you know yeah and all that Samuel to the horn of oil anointed him in the midst of his brethren spirit of the lord came upon him from that day forward in other words his life became powered by the spirit now if you read david very well you will know that david was a man of the word but not only a man of the word he was also a man of the spirit but you see when the the spirit of god came upon him after the anointing, there was a new dimension of it altogether. And his life became a spirit-powered life. And honestly, that is one thing, again, I want to challenge us into, I want to encourage us into, to live a spirit-powered life. That our lives, we'll, we'll probably see it again, you know, when we get to the book of, uh, uh, to the, back to the epistles in the book of Romans, where uh, we actually are at this point in time. The spirit-powered life is what God has ordained for us from the beginning. That's the way it ought to be and that's what jesus came with jesus showed us that we should live a spirit-powered life jesus's life was powered by the spirit remember it was so important he told the disciples i know you are eager now i know that the, your zeal is serious now i know you want to jump out now you are on the go now you something is really that's a driving force you are you i mean that i rose up again means everything to this will change the world i know you want to go but don't go until the spirit comes upon you that's what jesus said in other words even the apostles he wanted them to run the kind of life he ran spirit powered so he told them don't move let the spirit come get the, be spirit powered and i'm saying that to somebody this morning choose to be powered by the spirit choose to say 
I will ensure that the power behind me, the power inside me, the power moving me, the power making me to happen is the power of the spirit. Make sure that that is the case. Because when your your, your life is spirit powered, a lot of things happen. Uh, not only to you, everybody around you benefits from a spirit powered life just in one person. Everybody around will benefit from that. That's what happened with David. As we are going to see in the course of time while we read through this. Please, I need somebody to make up his mind this morning. I want my life to be spirit powered like Jesus' was, like the early apostles were, were, like David was. I want my life to be spirit powered. Pray that way this morning and the Spirit of God indeed will do something about that for you. The Lord bless you. Thank you very much for sharing time with us this morning. We really truly appreciate you. God bless you.